The seventh movie in the series which started in 1996 is also the penultimate outing of Ethan Hunt as the super spy who is called for missions none of the other agencies can handle. And for the first time this is the first of a two part story. Does this film reach the epicness and the grand scale that one would expect from it? Let's see. Hello, namaskar, welcome, swagatam. Sixty-one-year-old Tom Cruise stars in Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One, doing death-defying stunts in a story which promises to have higher stakes than ever, more emotional depth than ever, and of course, more awesome action than ever. This video does not contain any plot spoilers for the movie, so you can continue to watch my review, what I thought about the movie, without worrying about it ruining your experience when you go to watch it. But this review will surely modify your expectations when you walk in a theater. This time around, Ethan's enemy is an all-powerful AI, which is ready to take control of the world, and the entire plot exists only because this AI believes that Ethan is the only one that can stop him. Talk about grandiosity! So this movie, more than any of the preceding ones, has put Ethan on a god level. He is not only immortal, he is also the single being on the planet with an incomparable strength of character and an incorruptible moral compass. The main plot device is this key which is the only way to access this AI's source code and control it. This movie has an ensemble cast of Hayley Atwell, Wing Rames, Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson, Vanessa Kirby, Isai Morales, Pom, Clementif, Henry Cerny, and plenty of other big names who appear in smaller roles. Which goes to say that there is a lot going on in this movie and I do mean a lot. Many of the characters don't have much to do and no one exemplifies this issue in this film more than Shay Vigam, whose only job is to unsuccessfully chase after Ethan throughout the whole movie. Also, the movie is quite complex and it might warrant a second viewing to understand some points which you might have missed the first time. There are so many parties involved that it is really difficult to follow whose allegiance is to whom, which person represents which agency and all that. I don't think this counts as a negative because all said and done, this movie is hell of an entertaining ride and watching it a few times in the theatres is not going to be boring at all. I would surely have liked them to give a little more time to the Ethan-Ilsa relationship because the emotional weight this dynamic carries in the movie might not be as a Parent, unless you have watched the previous movies. But then who in their right minds would not have watched Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and Mission Impossible Fallout? Right? Anyway, Hayley Atwell is the fresh face in this franchise and she earns her place in the movie. She has her skills but in stark contrast to Rebecca Ferguson, she is not super skilled fighter nor is as deeply involved with Ethan as her. This contrast is what gives her a great scope to shine in the film and shine she does. The special skills she has is in my mind, showcased a few too many times. I mean, it becomes predictable at one point of time. And it doesn't help that Ethan turns out to be a master in that skill himself. But then, Ethan is basically God, as I said earlier. What I mean to say is that there is one trick which was good and interesting in the beginning of the movie, but the overuse and over-dependence on that trick through the entire runtime of the movie actually made it cheap. And I'm not talking about the masks. I mean, if you're watching Mission Impossible movie, you know there are going to be masks. Unreal, overused masks. But that is the part and parcel of the franchise and as such, it shouldn't be held against it. Overall, this film does suffer a bit from being one that comes after extremely good movies, setting the expectations and the bars too high for any movie. You are bound to compare Dead Reckoning Part 1 to uh, Mission Impossible Fallout and that will not only leave you a little dissatisfied but also lead you to draw parallels in the scenes from that movie. It doesn't help that much of the supporting cast has returned from the previous movie and Christopher McQuarrie is the person who directed both of these. Action-wise, the film does not disappoint, especially the close quarter fights involving Ilsa and Gabriel and Ethan and Paris. But in my mind, the train sequence in the Dead Reckoning Part 1 movie pales in comparison to the helicopter sequence of 
follow the previous movie and the musical score has taken a step back from the previous outing of Lorn Balfe in the Mission Impossible franchise. Dead Reckoning Part 1 score has a lot of build up but not much of what I would say punch in the music. That continuous thrill and the crescendo of action which I loved so much in Fallout is lacking in this score. Overall, this is a superbly made action movie with well-placed comedy and some deaths which do hit a nerve. And yet, the movie suffers from its own over-ambitious scope and unavoidable comparisons to its predecessors. The cliffhanger was good and not forced and does leave adequate intrigue to watch the next part, especially with the expectation that Ethan's past which played a significant part in making the stakes so personal for Ethan in this movie would be explored more in the second part. With hopes that I get the chance to re-watch this movie in theatres, I give Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 7 thumbs ups out of 10. If you have watched this movie, do let me know how you felt about it and if you don't agree with my opinion, jump right down in the comment section to share your thoughts. Do consider giving this review a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends. For videos like this and more, click the subscribe button to stay tuned with The Versatile Doctor. This is Dr. Abhinav Atul signing off. It is my pride and privilege to be able to connect with you through this video. Namaskar.